you weird, beautiful homo sapiens. I'm Julie. And I'm Corey, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Sense Podcast, episode five. Today's story is going to be a lot different than last week's story. I don't know if y'all have listened to that one yet, but it was very dark and very gruesome, and it's very hard to talk about, and I know it was hard to listen to. So this week, we wanted to pick one that was a little bit more light and just not so deep. Yes. So So today's story is going to be about Kai, the wielding hitchhiker. Yes. I don't know if a lot of, there's a Netflix documentary right now about Mm -hmm. it. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out. But I I had never heard of it until that documentary. I know. I had never heard about it. And this happened in like what? 2013. Yeah. 2013. Yeah. And I had never heard of this before. And apparently it was this big deal. Yeah. Because we're true crime fanatics. So you would think we would have heard about it. Yeah, so that's what that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to get into that shortly. First, I want to remind everybody, if you're new here, you can watch this episode on YouTube if you would rather watch rather than listen. And we're going to have a lot of like crazy, we're going to have some fun videos on the screen today because mm-hmm. there's like, to help tell this story, there's a lot of video that goes along with it. So we're going to have a lot of that on the screen. If you want to watch on our YouTube channel, just look in our show notes, you'll see the link to our YouTube channel. Yes, Kai is definitely very bizarre. For anybody that's new here, we just want to thank y'all so much for tuning into our show. Mm -hmm. If you are new here and you don't know this, before every story that we tell every week, we go over our events of the week where we just bitch about something that irritates us that week Mm -hmm. and we kind of talk about it for a minute and then we get into the story. But if you don't want to listen to us bitch for a minute... We will not be offended. Mm-hmm. Check the show notes or the description below and you'll see the timestamps. You can skip right into the story if that's what you want to do. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I do that all the time when I'm listening to a podcast. I'm like, okay, I well, really see, don't feel like hearing y'all talk about this shit right now. Yeah, because me too. There's a lot of podcasts that I listen to to fall asleep. Mm-hmm. And so usually whenever it's one of those, I'm like, I just want to hear the story. Yeah. So that I can lock my phone and go to sleep. Yeah. So I will skip through yeah, all the bullshit. Yeah, like, so you don't hear a bunch of laughing. But there's people that do enjoy our events of the week. Yeah. So we do want to keep this in here for right now. And it also, if there's anybody new, we go over our events of the week. You can also submit your event of the week if you want. If you look in the description or in the show notes, there's a form where you can submit whatever it is you want to bitch about that week. And then we'll read it on the show anonymously and give our opinion on it. Yeah, I love doing that. Me too. So, shall we get into our... Vents of the week! I'll go first this time. Okay. So, my vent of the week stems from anxiety. Ooh, good topic. My vent is that it gets on my nerves whenever people don't understand anxiety in general. Yeah, and there's a lot of people that don't. Which, honestly, I'm happy for them that they don't. Yeah. But it, it does affect... It does affect the people that do suffer in a negative way whenever they haven't even not only experienced it themselves but know or love someone that has yeah and they don't even try to understand and they think that you're just being extra or over the top yeah or that all you have to do is take a pill yeah or take a pill you'll feel better go talk to somebody you'll feel better go work out for this a is bit. my favorite one go outside go outside you, you don't need fucking sunlight. think that i go outside obviously i fucking leave the house every day i mean i'm go not to gonna debate the fact that the sun does help people feel better it in a does. scientific way but that's not gonna solve people's anxiety. chronic anxiety yes yeah, chronic anxiety okay so examples when someone's drinking from like a regular water bottle, the plastic, and they keep squishing the fucking thing, <laughs> I it I want to punch them in the face. Okay, yeah. that's it. It's my it's anxiety noise. is so bad that okay, like our house is up. I don't know. Raised off the ground. Yeah. yeah. And you can hear every single step. Yep. That goes on. <laughs> yep. And we both have anxiety, so. I think our, I think both of our anxiety, we have so much anxiety over noises Mm -hmm. that can be controlled. Yes. I'm like, could you just fucking stop? Like, well, I mean, I understand like with the house being raised off the ground, there's not a whole lot you can do, Mm -hmm. but do you have to be so fucking flat footed? Yeah. Like, can you just try to walk a little bit lighter? Okay. Like, but it's, I even get on my own nerves. I'll (laughs) tiptoe. Me too. (laughs) <laughs> or like when I'm eating. That's whenever I say that, like I'm talking to myself, like, do you have to fucking walk so hard? Yeah. Don't just stop. 
And like whenever I'm eating, like I have to have something playing. I cannot hear myself chew. I don't know if there's anybody out there that can just eat in complete silence with someone else. Yeah. We are not those people. Especially if it's like anything that has a crunch. Mm -hmm. There will be some kind of music or a show playing. (laughs) Can't stand it. So, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of people that can relate to that. But my vent is, which I guess you're right. Like, I'm happy for those people that maybe they don't even realize that they're doing it or that it gets on my nerves. But, I mean, I will say that my actions do prove that it gets on my fucking nerves. Mm -hmm. So maybe just try to understand a little bit more before you think that I'm just being overdramatic. Yeah, it we get very overstimulated. Very quickly. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of people suffer with that. And yeah, I'm so glad for the people that, because I would give anything yeah. to not have that problem. I actually used to be that way. I never. You did used to be that way. I, and I think I rubbed off on you <laughs> yeah. because I've always been that way. I cannot fucking stand noise. I can't stand it. Okay. So that was my event of the week. Short and sweet. Mm-hmm. Mine's probably not going to be as short. Okay. That's okay. It's a little bit more deep. All right, so my event of the week is about like all the situations or people that you ever interact with, whoever it may be, where it's very obvious that the only thing they care about in the conversation is how much money you've made and all of these things that you have or have not accomplished. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of people are everywhere. Give you the ick. The ick, yes. They do. Because my whole way of living life and being happy is not based off of my successes Mm -hmm. or how much money I have or what I'm able to afford and not afford. That is not what I base my happiness off of. And I feel like 90% of the population bases their happiness off of that. Mm -hmm. The old saying about money does not buy happiness, I live by that because I know that that's not true. Yeah, We've had money before. We've had a lot of money before. We've worked really financially rewarding jobs before. Mm -hmm. And we have been able to not have to worry about bills. And we've been able to just go out and do whatever the fuck we wanted to. And we were more miserable than we've ever been. Yeah. During that time period. We didn't even have, I mean, if we're just being real, we didn't even have a good relationship with our daughter, which is so sad to say. No, because we were working our asses off in order to make that money. We saw her maybe two hours a day, you know. It's just whenever you, I feel like whenever you, like, I mean, we had always struggled ever since we got together. Mm -hmm. I won't say we struggled, but we were like most of the population. Yeah. Like we lived paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. We knew what it was to struggle and we always wished and dreamed of the day that we didn't have to worry about stuff like that anymore. And then it finally came. We didn't lose it. We chose to walk away from it because of how unhappy we were becoming. Yeah. Because it was destroying us as a couple as parents. Yeah. I don't live my life that way. You don't live your life. We don't live our lives that way. Mm-hmm. And so I just get so frustrated and annoyed with people whenever that's literally the first thing out of their mouth mm-hmm. is, oh, well, where do you work? What do you do? Well, and then also because a lot of people in this town, especially don't accept like a musician, like that has to just be a hobby. Yeah. You know, unless you clock in and clock out every day then you're not really working. Yeah. And like that's, you that's the thing is I feel day. like there's so many people that are so stuck in the fucking nineties mm-hmm. that don't understand that you can literally make money off of anything today. Yeah. You can do whatever the fuck it is you want to do and you can make money. Exactly. But you have to know, you have to have the brains to do it and the determination yeah, and the, the drive, drive and the want to do it mm-hmm. because maybe I'm not going to, maybe I don't want to live my life working for someone else. Yeah constantly giving them more than what I can even give myself Mm -hmm. just to be able to pay my bills and maybe go on a vacation every year. Right. And that's what people live for. They live for that week of vacation. I don't want to fucking live for a week of happiness. No, I want to be happy every single day. And so what that means is I want to do what, what makes me happy every single day. Yeah. And the thing about 2023 is I can do that now and make money doing it, Mm -hmm. but people aren't going to take that as serious as if I was going and working yeah, if you have a corporate at job. At a normal job. Yeah. Corporate America fucking sucks. I'm just, I'm very, I'm glad with the progression that our society has made, though, mm-hmm. in this whole topic. 
Yeah. Like everybody's like waking up and they're like, no, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve to be treated like this. Yeah. I don't deserve to have to give more than what I can give myself or my family to somebody who doesn't give a fuck about me, who will replace me tomorrow whenever I leave. Right. I'm so glad that so many people are standing up for that. Yes. And today. You, you're not irreplaceable. Yeah. <laughs> Just do what makes you happy. And to all the people who think that singing and making music, doing a podcast, doing a YouTube channel and all that kind of stuff is a hobby and that that couldn't possibly make more money than they've ever made. Fuck them. Yeah. Wake up, do some research and let's move on. I agree. Like stemming from your event from last week, educate yourselves before you fucking comment. Yes. It goes back to that. Yep. Just understand that happiness does not come with a dollar sign next to it. Right. If you can't fucking sit in your house and be so fucking poor with your spouse because we've been there before and still be happy, then... Those were literally the best days of our lives. Yeah. Whenever we look back on those, we talk about this all the time. Mm-hmm. Whenever we look back on the, that shitty trailer, trailer that we used yes. to live in that we paid $400 a month for, that was the happiest I've ever been. Mm-hmm. And we literally had nothing. We had nothing. The happiest. Yeah. Because all you really need is each other. Or you don't have to have someone else. You just, you if you don't have a spouse or a significant other, then just do be happy something with that makes yourself. you happy. Yes. Yeah. Just do something that brings you joy. Mm-hmm. That's the whole point. Quit worrying about what everybody else thinks. Quit worrying about what level of quotation mark success you're supposed to be at by whatever age it is you are. Yeah. None of that shit matters. None of it. That was a lot deeper than my event. <laughs> Yeah, I'm coming out here with anxiety, and you're like, "Let no, me give it to you." No, anxiety is a big one. I mean, we can talk about anxiety for a whole episode if we wanted to. Yeah, but we're not going to get into that. People think I'm really crazy. Then anxiety and depression. I feel like we could have a whole episode on that. Maybe we should do that one day. Our whole mental health episode. Since you love to bring awareness to that. Yes, I think it's very important to bring awareness to that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so shall we get into the story? Well, this is your story this week. You did all the research on this one. <laughs> And I mean, I watched the documentary, so I do know kind of, you know, everything that happens, but yeah, I put a lot of work into this one. You did. You worked your ass off on this one. Let's go. Research isn't fun, is it? No. (laughs) Yes. So today we are talking about Kai, the wielding hitchhiker. Crazy motherfuckers what he is. (laughs) Crazy. (laughs) Crazy. Okay. And so sources for this episode are listed below. Caleb Lawrence McGilvery, more commonly known as Kai, became an internet star overnight back in 2013. Little did anyone know he would be facing murder charges just three months later. A hero turned murderer. Kai was a drifter who left his home in Alberta, Canada as a young teenager. He was a dreamer who had a laid-back outlook on everything in life. He referred to himself as home-free instead of homeless and never stayed in one spot for long. Hitching rides and crashing on couches, truly living life to the fullest. So at this point in the story, Kai was 24 years old. The morning of February 1st, 2013 started no different than usual for Kai. He was thumbing for a ride on Route 99 in California headed toward North Fresno. He was just in luck when a black Oldsmobile pulled over and motioned for him to get in. In the driver's seat was 54-year-old Jet Simmons McBride, who we come to learn is a fucking lunatic. Yes, he is. He was on his way to stop a terrorist attack at the Super Bowl. (laughs) (laughs) Based off of his takeaway from a conspiracy theory that he found on the internet. Fucking conspiracy theorists, right? (laughs) Right. Am I right? I mean, we're conspiracy theorists, too. Yeah, but we're not that To an extent, not this. This is next level. (laughs) We're not fucking packing up. (laughs) We're not going to go try to intercept a terrorist attack. Yeah. He called himself Jesus Christ. Yes, he did. (laughs) He was so fucking crazy that he tossed his cell phone and left his dog in the middle of the road so he could not be tracked. When someone found his phone and returned it to him, he smashed it into one million pieces so he could not be traced by the white trucks that were following him from the Illuminati. Okay, I'm paranoid, but I don't ever think the Illuminati is following me. Mm Mm-mm. Come on. Do you believe in the Illuminati, though? Yeah, I do. I do, too. I think that's there's definitely 
Mm. There's definitely a secret society whenever it comes to yes. the elite. We have to talk about that one day. Kai hops in the car, grateful for the ride, and they head towards the city. They were getting along really well, probably because they shared most of the same delusional thinking. Right as they were getting into the city, the car overheated. They pulled over on the side of the road and Jeff gave Kai $40 to go score some weed. (laughs) They eventually got the car started again and continued on their journey. Moments later, the two would be involved in a collision. But before we give you the details on this crash, let us first tell you about the reporter who received the call to go report on the incident. Reporter Jessup Reisbeck, who reported for KMPH out of Fresno, California, usually covered sports, but he was branching out to cover other stories. Jessup was called to the scene of a bizarre crime where a Pacific gas and electric worker, Rayshawn Neely, was pinned against a truck. Upon arrival at the scene, Jessup just so happened to see a homeless-looking man in a red shirt walking with a cigarette in his hand. This was Kai. Jessup turns to him and says, Are you the hero? With Kai responding, Well, I'm one of them. Kai proceeds to unravel the time leading up to the incident. He says he was in the passenger seat of Jet's car when Jet randomly started talking about raping a 14-year-old girl in the Virgin Islands. At first, he was crying and seemed remorseful, and then he suddenly snapped and said, You know what? I'm Jesus Christ, and I can do anything I fucking want, before smashing into the worker, pinning him up against a truck. Kai witnessed two women, Tanya Baker and her daughter Ginger, rush over to help, but Jet immediately got out to finish the job. Jet started pulling the women off the worker whenever Kai then runs up behind Jet and hit him three times with a hatchet in the back of the head. But we will just let Kai tell you himself. I'm one of the heroes. Yeah. yeah. Can we talk to you? Do you mind? What do you want to talk about? What happened today? Well, well went straight out of Dogtown, skateboarding, surfing it up. Before I say anything else, I want to say no matter what you've done, you deserve respect. Even if you make mistakes, you're lovable. And it doesn't matter your look, skills, or age, or size, or anything, you're worthwhile. No one could ever take that away from you. Now, this stuff right here, I was driving and I was, well, I was in the passenger side of this car and he comes over on there he was over by the recycling center he says oh when I was in the Virgin Islands 30 years old on a business trip I I, I, I suck this 14 year old I was like you what he's like I raped this 14 year old starts crying gives me a big hug he's just like 300 pound guy I'm like oh sh-. he must be f-ed, man like what's he talking about I didn't take him seriously at first he comes driving down this way he's like you know what I come to realize I'm Jesus Christ and I can do anything I f-ing want to and Watch this, bam, and he smashed into this f***ing guy right there, pinned him in between that f***ing truck. And so I grabbed the bag, I threw it over by that pole right there, and then f***ing buddy gets out, and these two women are trying to help him. He runs up and he grabs one of them, man. Like a guy that big can snap a woman's neck like a pencil stick. So I f***ing ran up behind him with a hatchet, smash, smash, smash. Can, can I get your name and where you're from, if you, if you don't mind? I'm Kai. Kai, can I get spelling for you, Straight buddy? out of Dogtown, K-A-I. K-A-I, do you have a last name? No, bro, I don't have anything. <laughs> where, where, where are you from originally? Are you from Fresno area? Sophia, West Virginia. No kidding. How old are you? I can't call it. Okay. And what made you take the actions that you did? That woman was in danger. He just finished uh, what looked like at the time killing somebody. And if I hadn't have done that, he would have killed more people. It doesn't seem like you have any concern for yourself. You're all about, I mean, doing the right thing and, and not even worrying about Kai first. I don't have any family. Like, as far as, as far as anybody I grew up with is concerned, I'm already dead. So, whatever. Jessup kept replaying this mind-blowing interview in his head over and over. And little did he know, his interview with Kai would become viral overnight. This video got 400,000 views overnight, which now is not a lot, but think back to 2013. That was pretty big. Yeah. People seemed to really relate to Kai, and they were just very fascinated with him. It seemed as if he was using this opportunity to spread love. In one of his interviews, he looked directly into the camera and said, First, I just want to say one thing. Even if you make mistakes, you're lovable, and it doesn't matter your look, skills, or age, your size, or anything. You're worthwhile. No one can ever take that away from you. The video reached his family back in Alberta, Canada. He was actually born in Western Canada, not Sophia, West Virginia, as he stated in the interview. We later come to realize that Kai doesn't expose the majority of his personal information accurately due to his troubled past. Kai says that he was pretty much raised by the TV. Kai says, quote, I don't have any family. As far as anybody that I grew up with is concerned, I'm already dead. 
According to Kai, he would get locked in a room for 20 hours a day. He would get hit with broom handles and spoons for making any noise, and he would have his mouth stuffed with hot pepper for cursing. He also claimed that his parents would give him ice cold showers and have sex in front of him. Oh my god, that's sick. Jessup was the only one who had any means of communicating with Kai. Jessup also felt like he had to protect Kai and sort of help him navigate all this newfound fame. Jessup met with Kai at a restaurant about three days after the viral video to discover all of these newfound offers Kai was getting. Kai sat and listened to the offers. The biggest offer he received was his own reality TV show produced by E!, the same network as Keeping Up with the Kardashians. He said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to flip this pencil in the air, and if it lands one way, I'll accept the offer. And if it lands the other way, I'll continue smoking weed and riding the waves of life. (laughs) The pencil fell to the table, and Kai said, well, I guess I'm going to go smoke weed then. Jessup told the producers that Kai declined the offer, so they came back with an even better offer to persuade him. They said that they would put Kai in a limo filled with weed and drive him all over L.A. doing whatever he pleased. Hell yes. (laughs) Kai, of course, accepted the offer and appeared on the Jimmy Kimmel Show on February 11, 2013. He became an overnight sensation and was even a guest on Jimmy Kimmel Live. What do people say to you when they see you? Uh, They say, hey, you're Kai. So, as you saw, Kai lived his 15 minutes of fame after his big appearance on the show. Fans even made merch for him. The words smash, smash, smash were everywhere at this point. The world was fixated on the homeless hero. With all eyes on him, studying every move he made, a lot of people came to realize that Kai was not this down-to-earth hero that he was made out to be. So, he started to show some very disturbing behavior. He was kicked out of every drinking establishment in town. He was impossible to control or predict. He would ride his skateboard in the lobby of the Roosevelt Hotel and urinate on stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. (laughs) There's some stars I'd like to urinate on. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, but you wouldn't really do it. Fans were commenting saying that Kai was just a high, mentally ill, homeless person. By March, a Facebook fan page that was made by Kai's fans was shut down with a message reading, We can no longer vouch for Kai's integrity towards people anymore. Kai has worn out his welcome. Fans even commented that Kai got a large tattoo on the right side of his face and neck to get the attention put back on him. Yeah. (laughs) I never understand whenever people do that. I know. (laughs) Like, I'm all for tattoos and expressing but not on yourself. Your face. Yeah, but I mean, I'm even okay with the ones on your neck. Yeah. But, but it was literally like right yeah. here. Your face, though. Yeah. Kai was fading out of the limelight, and the next time that he would be in it, he would be fighting for his freedom. So, Joseph Galfi Jr. was a 73 year old lawyer who was well known and respected in his community in Clark, New Jersey. He served in the Army from 1965 to 1970 as a major and got his Juris Doctor degree from Seton Hall University. He served as the attorney for the planning board in Greenbrook and in his free time played in a wedding band for 25 years. Joseph's neighbor said that he had been living alone since his longtime partner died five years prior. Joseph first met Kai in Times Square on a Saturday afternoon in May, the day before Mother's Day in 2013. They both left New York in Joseph's car and headed to Joseph's house. On the way, they stopped for food, and this is when Joseph offered Kai some beer and a place to stay for the night. Kai stayed the night at Joseph's house and left the following morning, but he returned again the next night. The following day, Joseph didn't show up for work, and a co-worker called his neighbors and asked them to go check on him. Robert Ellenport, former mayor of Clark, also one of Joseph's good friends, went to check on him at his house. The house was dark, and he noticed that newspapers were starting to pile up outside. Joseph lived alone, and he had heart problems and other health issues. Given Joseph's age and his health issues, Robert suspected the worst and he called the police. Inside the home, police discovered the lifeless body of 73-year-old Joseph Galfi Jr., who had clearly been beaten to death in his bedroom and was wearing only his socks and underwear. The beating was so brutal that one of his ears had been completely torn off. Police start off their investigation with text messages from Joseph's phone that led straight to Kai. Police immediately put out an arrest warrant. An employee at a nearby Starbucks recognized Kai and called the police. By the time the police arrived, Kai was no longer there. They started to look in the surrounding areas and one officer took a chance at the Greyhound bus stop. He saw him in the waiting area and called for backup and they made the arrest. Kai claims he is innocent and that the police destroyed evidence that would exonerate him. 
He wrote a Facebook post, and I'm going to read it, but it is very vulgar, so here's your warning. Quote, what would you do if you woke up with a groggy head, metallic taste in your mouth, in a stranger's house, walked to the mirror and seen cum dripping from the side of your face from your mouth, and started retching, realizing that someone had drugged, raped, and blown their fucking load in you? What would you do? End quote. Yeah, that was pretty vulgar. <laughs> it's, yeah. But necessary. So, one of his Facebook friends, Terry Radcliffe, commented, Well, obviously, find them as fast as I could and smash them with a hatchet or whatever else I could find. Kai responded with, I like your idea. Yeah. So, Kai's trial began in New Jersey in April of 2019. By this time, he had already been in jail for about six years. The judge immediately shut down any talk of his internet fame. Testifying in his own defense, Kai stuck with his story that he blacked out after drinking a beer with Joseph and he woke up with Joseph on top of him, pulling his pants down, trying to sexually assault him. He said he only fought to get away and he did not know Joseph was dead until he was arrested. That's, I mean, his whole fucking ear was torn off. Yeah, <laughs> he definitely fucking beat the shit out of him. The jurors deliberated for two days and found Kai guilty of first degree murder. They strongly took the medical examiner's testimony into consideration, which showed Galfi's injuries were so severe that they were the result of far more than just an effort to prevent a sexual advance. Kai was sentenced to 57 years at the New Jersey State Prison and will be eligible for parole in 2061. What a crazy motherfucker. I know. Literally crazy. <laughs> he was like all over the place. And he, you know, he could have done so much good. Mm -hmm. He could have been a huge inspiration to a lot of people. Yeah, like he had a platform and he, he definitely it. had a big platform mm -hmm. and he had a lot of opportunity and he threw it all away. Yes. So that is the story of Kai the Wilding Hitchhiker. Yes. If y'all have not seen the, the Netflix documentary, go check it out. Yeah. It really goes into a lot more detail than we did. Mm -hmm. And it's just crazy. And it's just crazy that I had never heard of it. I know. So that is going to do it for us today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this story today. We will be back next week with a brand new episode. And until then, I hope everybody stays safe. And stay weird. Bye. Bye. Bye.